Welcome to our first video in a series that illustrates the API engine's capabilities. And this series of videos is going to concentrate on the Joke API tutorial. So we're going to start off very basic uh, with this first video and then progress as the videos go on, as the series goes on, uh, to uh, something that we would consider production. Uh, by the end of it, we will have some AL code uh, in place uh, to show the professional and user-friendly solution. Um, however, in the beginning, we're going to stay very basic, no AL coding, just to learn the basics of, of how the API engine works and what you can do with it without coding, any coding whatsoever. So, like I said, this is the very basics. We're going to be uh, creating what we call a new API set and API function. We'll create uh, credential information that has the specific endpoint that we want to go to. Uh, we'll get back, uh, our objective is to get back data from an API call as quickly as possible. And uh, then we'll create a second function that overrides the original credential endpoint, just as an introduction. So let's get into it. Uh, first of all, um, we're have our extensions that, that can be downloaded from App Source in Business Central 21. Uh, we also have a valid subscription for the uh, Sweet Engine API engine. Uh, there's another video uh, that will explain how to set up that, that subscription. So for right now, we just want to uh, see how the basics of the API engine work. So the core here, uh, while we're doing some definition, is a, a table called API sets, a page. You can see that we don't have any. Um, and we are going to be working with the joke API. So we're going to create a new API set called joke API. We can call this whatever ever we want. We can give it a, a description if we want. So I'm just going to paste something in there. Uh, these are just for more information. So this is version two of the Joke API, which is actually a free API. Uh, it's, it's out there. Yes, it will download jokes, but it's more of an environment for uh, people to learn more about APIs and how they work and for developers to practice those types of calls. Um, we can also document in here a uh, URL to go to for documentation. And let's just kind of look at that real quick. So it becomes a hyperlink. We can go out to the essentially the, the documentation for the J joke API. It's, it's fairly complete. It lets you do things right from here um, and shows you all the different options that you have on getting information about jokes. Okay. So we have that defined. So the first thing we're going to want to do is create credentials. Even though this doesn't really require any credentials, this is also where we store our um, initial endpoint that we want to call. So we have a lot of information here. Probably, you know, the authorization type is no authorization because this one doesn't require anything. But for more advanced authentication, we support the following methods. And then we need the most important thing that we need to, to try to make an API call as quickly as possible is an import, uh, an endpoint URL. So I'm going to take a URL and paste it in here and do a little bit of an explanation is that, okay, so this is the endpoint URL that we are specifying that all functions in this API set should use. However, we entered something pretty specific. So this is defined to do a specific thing. Um, that's not probably what we want to end up with. We want it to be more variable and let the API engine figure out what the URL should be based on 
other variables in the system. However, for this first example, we're going to paste the whole endpoint in there just so that we can quickly get a result without doing too much additional work. So note that we're calling the joke API in the section where we retrieve jokes. Uh, this is the uh, category of joke that we want. So we're specifying any, we don't, we don't care what category it's in. We only want one joke back. You can specify up to 10. And we want these to be um, not offensive jokes. We want them to be uh, safe jokes that hopefully everyone uh, can have fun with and, and not be offended. So we have our URL in there. We can uh, now back off the credentials. Go back to the API set. So the next thing that we need, and one of our objectives in this, this uh, tutorial, this first video, is we need to create an API function. So these are going to be the various things that we can do in the joke API set. So think of the API set as a collection, uh, if you're familiar with, with Postman, of API calls. And then we further can divide that down into functions that will do specific things. So I'm just going to call this first function uh, get one safe joke. And we can put a description in there if we want. I have a description I can paste in. Okay. So now some of the more important things just to get a call uh, right away, there are actually are some defaults that we'll leave alone. But when we're essentially creating the request to send to the API, which method do we want to use? We really only provide one, which is actually quite powerful, but we have a way through uh, code unit interfaces where uh, developers can kind of de develop their own request processing methods should ours not be adequate enough for, for those needs or that they want to do something special. Then the same for the same thing, we have response processing method. We're going to leave this alone right now. We want to just see the data that comes back, but we're really not going to do anything with it at this, at this point in time. Um, the other thing that we will want to set, uh, just for further example, so that you can see what kind of uh, the API engine will, will do out of the box, is we're going to specify a buffer processing type. And when we actually see the buffer, uh, uh, it, it, it may be a little more self-explanatory, but essentially the buffer is a structured table that instead of the, the raw character response we get back from uh, the API call, is that we're structuring the data in kind of a parent-child relationships and you know, by field designations, but you'll see that in just a little bit. So now we have an API function here. Um, and what we wanted to do was as quick as possible, get a result from the, the joke API. So using the URL that we put in the credentials and the, the couple of settings here, we can press this execute button, which is uh, essentially a way to execute the whole API lifecycle, uh, all with one, one button push. So we'll go ahead and press that. It's going out and actually making the call. And now we know that it's finished because it wants to say, it, it's asking us, do we want to see the API message that was related to this API call? So an API message is kind of uh, represents the whole life cycle or the core of one particular API call. Um, so one call to the, the joke API that retrieves jokes. Uh, if we did 10 calls to, to that same uh, function, we would have 10 messages there, one representing each call. So let's take a look at what we got. So we can see that, you know, this was the function that was used. We do have some uh, data related as to when things started and when things stopped. You can see things went pretty, pretty quickly because we pressed the magic button that, that does the whole thing at once. Um, down here, there's, there's a thing called parameters, which we will reserve for a future video to explain. But we can also see our request, so the query request, 
that was generated came right from the credentials table where we entered it in before. Uh, it didn't do anything after that because we didn't tell it to do anything after that. But now we got a response of essentially one joke. Um, and, you know, this looks to be in JSON format. Uh, but it essentially, it's just the raw character stream, stream that we got back from the, the joke API. We wanted to look at a more structured view of this data uh, because I put in that, hey, we want you to process a um, JSON formatted text string into uh, the message data buffer. Uh, now we can see what that looks like. And you can see essentially we have like all the individual fields that uh, the API call gave us for this single joke uh, in a more structured format. Well, one, we have a path so we can keep tra uh, track of parent-child relationships, the individual value um, here. Actually, I need to go over further. The individual name of what we're getting. So this is a single joke in the category programming. And then it tells us the, the actual joke uh, that we get back. Uh, some flags as to, you know, maybe some undesirable content as to, you know, what, what, whether this is a, a, a political joke uh, or, or not um, as a unique ID and so on. So we've completed our first API call. So let's go back and do one other thing for today's uh, uh, video. Again, we're keeping it real basic in the beginning just to kind of give the overview of, of, of how it works but certainly we're only scratching the surface on the potential of, of what we could be doing. But we want to keep these videos short in length and uh, you know, give you small doses of information. So we're going to do one other thing. We're going to add a second function to this and we're going to call it um, get 10 programming. We'll abbreviate it a little bit. Jokes. And we can give it a description that I'll, I'll paste in. And essentially here it, it says it's going to get 10 jokes from the programming, um, programming category. Again, we'll leave these the same. Make the the buffer processing JSON. But what will happen if I try to execute this? Well, it's going to go back and grab that URL that we put in the credentials, which isn't, uh, which actually has all the, uh, the URL to just get the single joke from any category. So we can, if we wanted to, uh, override the URL that's being used in the credentials table. And we can do that by, which would be one way to have us call a different endpoint than one of the other functions. In our next vid video, we're going to get into how to dynamic change the path. So in other words, I could have one function code that does both of these things because we're essentially going to be building the path or the URL path uh, based on some dynamic or um, uh, data that's specific to uh, this function call. But one other way that we could do it that gives us more flexibility, it lets us create a URL per function, but that maybe not as dynamically as we will eventually want, um, but it, it will, will do the job. So one of the things that we can do is in our variables here, we can specify what's called the URL override. And this is a button that says that, hey, this is gonna be active for the next call. Uh, we do have um, a, uh, uh, a thing on sequence, so if they need to be in a certain order, our name really doesn't um, come into play because what we're, we're really trying to do is just put in, um, uh, override the URL. Uh, that comes back. And now in the value, 
So we can say that it's going to be a, um, well, it needs to be, the URL is always a text value, and we're going to make it static, meaning that it's never going to change. This, this value is never going to change uh, for this variable within this function. And the static value that we're going to give it, sorry, I pasted in the wrong thing. be this, which essentially, I widen this table, widen this field, you can see that now we're telling it uh, that we want jokes from the programming category, and we want 10 of them, and we're still going to keep safe mode there. All right, so essentially what we've done is say, don't use the URL from the credentials table, use the URL that we have specified uh, for this this function. Now, normally we would use this feature for um, the 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 case where we have an API call that may be generating a PDF document or some other kind of document, and the result of that API call is giving us a URL as to where to view that PDF document. So that way we can kind of dynamically go to different URLs based on results of previous API calls. But in this one, we're just using it to override what's in the credentials table. So let's go back and now execute this one. So that's back on the home screen. We'll do execute. And if I got everything all right here, we can see that, uh, yes, we process this. And if we look at the response, um, the, it says there weren't any errors, so that's good and it returned 10 jokes and we can see there's 10 jokes worth of data in this we want to look at that in a more structured way we can look at the um, data buffer and see that now um, we have essentially one joke here another joke here another joke here so there should be 10 of them all together in that um, if you're really paying attention, you can see that we're keeping track of the depth, right, and the parent entry number. So you can see when it changes jokes that it's referring back to its beginning. But we'll get into that a lot, lot more in future videos as well. Just to kind of give the life cycle, uh, a little bit of the life cycle of a message, the concept that we have an API set and a collection of functions, right? And then, in, uh, and this way, we just did things very fixed. You know, this is the URL to use for this. This one, we didn't specify a specific one for this function, but it's defaulting back to the credentials table. Next time, we'll start um, um, looking at how to dynamically build those URLs in a more variable way or a more flexible way, a way that gives us more flexibility in the future. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and, I, and stay tuned for uh, the series where we, you know, we will keep progressing uh, to show the features of the API engine and trying to get to a more production-looking solution.